Hi and welcome to my channel. Now today's video is going to be a review on these dual CL35 speakers made in the 70s. Now you may be wondering where are they? Where's these speakers then Mike? They're usually sitting on top of here. I'm going to pick it up off the floor in a minute and plonk it on there. I think I've got enough room there for the moment. Right okay uh, I just want to uh, draw your attention maybe uh, to uh, what I was expecting how I buy these speakers and all that and uh, just go through a few things and make it a little bit more long-winded than normal my videos are normally long winded as it is but um, yeah I usually look around for something cheap put a low bid in something like that something maybe of interest something a bit um, maybe not so popular I haven't really bought many popular speakers recently uh, some old fashioned speakers some oldie speakers that uh, not many people are probably interested in these days but there is a few niche people about that like looking at these old speakers um, when I could probably go out and get something a bit more current a bit more modern and get a few more views on them which would help that's for certain but then again I'm going to pay that extra for them as well so it's good just a bit of a jamboree bag really uh, going and buy something not really know what you're getting yourself into and I've done that a couple of times recently I bought them uh, Kef uh, speakers and Concords not really knowing a lot about them but I bought them I bought them Dyna Dynaco uh, A35 speakers not knowing a lot about them we'll get a review on them very very shortly but the latest pair was these uh, dual speakers made by dual probably more known for making turntables really than speakers um, like I say from the 70s early 70s I see them local to me local pickup do like a local pickup because you want to get stuff a lot cheaper and the starting bid was £4.99 so I thought that's great so uh, there you go there's the £4.99 and that's what I won them for for £4.99 now I had to kind of brace the missus because uh, Going by this picture, if you ever look at this picture, it's hard to know exactly what size these are. I didn't get in touch with the bloke to ask him how big they were. I just thought these would be fairly big. Look at them pictures, so I better brace the uh, misses because uh, them uh, concords were fairly big and heavy. And uh, our car hasn't got a lot of room to be honest with you in the boot. Uh, we've got a buggy in there and another few bits and pieces, um, a child's uh, seat, and that's so we'll have to take that out. So I thought I'd better uh, brace her, so we're gonna have to take these seats out and uh, put the back down and uh, get the parcel shelf out, all that kind of stuff to get these pair of speakers in, make sure they're fit, because I don't want to go down and pick them up and I can't fit them in or bring back one at a time. It's a bit pointless, really. So I'm just going to put this picture up on the screen again. There's the picture I'm going by. So I'm going to talk over the picture now. So uh, I brought the missus upstairs. I showed her the picture just to brace us, brace her a little bit for how big these speakers are going to be. And we're trying to work out looking at the picture, because we didn't know what model number, no model one number on there. And we, I didn't get in touch with the bloke. This is really just potluck. A uh, couple of reasons I didn't get in touch with him. One reason that uh, I like a little bit of a, a surprise, and plus, uh, just in case I draw his attention, uh, the seller that these could be a really good pair of speakers, he may start typing that number in a few searches or something like that and think, oh, these are really, really good. These are worth a fortune. I can't start my fourth for 99. Now, that's pretty remote, but you never know. So, a bit of a jamboree. Uh, my top bid was £20. That, that's where my top bid was. I weren't going to go anymore because I didn't really know a lot about them, but I thought I'd make it lucky. There may be a good pair of speakers, or maybe some drivers in there that are sought after, so I'm in a kind of win-win situation maybe in that respect, but uh, a bit of fun as well. So anyway, I braced her, and uh, we drove down, and like I say, about 12 miles away, it didn't take that long, and uh, I made sure there was enough room on his drive for me to get past with these speakers, because I thought I don't want to scratch the car or anything like that, get him in there, and that, because we pulled on front first, I want to put him in the boot. So the bloke opens the door, and the first thing I'd done was give him five pound, he's five pound, and he turned around and said, well, I didn't get a lot for them, did I? I said, no, I said, that's the trouble with speakers, explaining that a local pickup, maybe you should have started them a bit higher than that. And he uh, gave me a little story that he had these, he bought these in Germany, where they were made many years ago with the system they come with, they come with some kind of system. And that uh, he, he, he got rid of the system, but kept these speakers because he really liked these speakers, etc., etc. And uh, then he looked down on the floor, ready to pick up the first unit. So this is it, this is uh, how big they are, so I'm going to plonk them on here, if I can get them on there, I'll give myself a bit of room here and everything. Just bear with me, because they weigh an absolute ton. There you go. Oh, dear. So, he handed me the first speaker, and I was a bit surprised, I thought he'd done this one of these, I thought it was one of these card sharks. You know, these CDs, Find the Queen, all that kind of stuff. I thought, he's put a big pair on there and sold me a little tick the doll's house pair. I couldn't work it out. I was, just, I was flabbergasted. I was just thought, oh my God, what's happened here? But uh, anyway, I've only paid 4 99 so I thought, well, look, that, that's what I've got. Um, 
didn't know which ones they were, but I thought these are just obviously just a little pair of speakers. So well, then he gave me the other one, I put them on top. Now the missus couldn't really see me from the position I was in at the house. So I've got them on top of each other and I've turned around and I started walking just slightly around the corner, just, she was just slightly out of view where she was sitting in the uh, driver's seat and I just come round and I've obviously pulled a little bit of fan and she was cracking up, she was absolutely cracking up because obviously she was expecting me to turn up with a massive pair of speakers. So there you go, this is a bit of a surprise, I just can't get over that picture and these speakers, there's obviously something I was missing in that picture but uh, these are the speakers. Uh, yeah, so a little bit of surprise. So there you go, yes, yeah, so going around local pickup, not knowing a lot about what you're buying, can come up with a, a, a bit of a surprise uh, one way or the other. So uh, let's have a little talk about these speakers now. Right, I can't take the front grid off. I don't think it comes off. I'm almost certainly stuck on there. I could be wrong, but uh, I couldn't get it off. But anyway, you're going to see the drivers and everything anyway, so don't worry too much about that. Anyway, these were made in the 70s, I think, something like that. And I take it these went on a very small kind of Wi Fi system. Uh, maybe something that actually come with these speakers kind of thing they all come together I don't really know but uh, yeah it could well be and this is us uh, these uh, CL35s are pretty much bottom of their range I think back then so uh, not expecting too much being the bottom of their range but they, they were fairly heavy for what they were they were fairly heavy so uh, what I normally do is get them home just I'll just put a meter across them normally sometimes I take the back off just to make sure nothing's shorting out before I plug it into one of my amps uh, it's okay if you've got an old amp or something like that, not too worried about, but if you've got a reasonable amp or anything old amp you don't want to ruin, uh, you could quite easily buy a pair of speakers and, and they're dead short inside or something like that. You never know because you know, you're not, you know, can't you know, trust someone 100% because I've, I've had speakers in the past, these work lovely and you get, and you get them home or they've arrived and they don't. So uh, just maybe double check that before you plug them into something expensive that uh, they're not dead short or anything like that and end up uh, blowing a few output transistors if you haven't got a fuse should protect them or anything like that so it's something worth bearing about anyway there's only six screws in the back so I did actually uh, undo the back now this I'll come to this I actually put this on separate in a minute because it's only got this silly uh, spade kind of connector where you've got one spade and one little pin old-fashioned kind of connector there so I actually put on uh, a little connector at the bottom here just to make it easier just to rise out of that and put them in the bottom but there's only six screws in the back of these so I thought oh, I'll take them off anyway and have a look uh, just to make sure everything was all right inside and put my meter on it, all that kind of stuff. And the very first speaker I'm done, uh, this is what I found inside. Uh, as you can see, I've got five pairs of socks and a couple of Enkies. Now that's going to come in handy, that's for certain. I was a bit low on socks and uh, the old Enkies, I suppose, were coming in handy somewhere along the line. So I was pretty pleased about that. Oh, obviously, you know, I'm always waiting for this day when I'm actually going to find someone concealed a wad of money in there or something like that. Uh, an old heirloom or something like that, it's going to be sitting in a pair of speakers, a good place to hide them and uh, when they come to sell them, whoever it is, on their behalf, years after they've died or something like that, uh, it's going to be a stack of white fibres in there or something like that, that would be the day. But anyway, this is the first time i found something inside and unlucky for me, uh, I've kind of uh, lost out on the uh, lottery there, I've got uh, some pairs of socks and uh, a couple of Enkies instead, so obviously that's not the correct uh, stuff that's supposed to be inside so I've disposed of all that and I picked it up and gave me hands a good wash afterwards I disposed of that and uh, then I undone the other speaker uh, and there's a few pictures of the other speaker I undone and uh, in that other speaker there was two of these foam bits in there as you can see two bits and that's there but I had a little look on the internet and everything else uh, a few other speakers in this kind of range and that's what they seem to come with two bits of foam in each it wasn't like one foam was supposed to be in one one was supposed to be in the other and he's, whoever's took them apart put both in one and a pair of socks in the other one no there is supposed to be as far as I know two bits of foam in each so obviously I haven't got two bits of foam I wanted to get them back to roughly where they were so I put one piece of foam back in each and lucky enough I had a load of wadding and I put that on the back and squeezed it all in and uh, that's going to be near enough obviously the foam is the right stuff but it's going to be near I'm not going to make a massive amount of difference so there you go uh, if we just have a little look at the crossovers there at the top there's the crossover at the top uh, which is a cut of these coils yeah and a cut of, I took them out here a cut of these coils and a cut of capacitors is the crossover in these units like I say they've got this uh, speaker terminal thing here and that's the only way of connecting them so I took it off uh, disconnected it and put my own little speaker terminals on the back just to make it easier for banana plugs and to poke some wires in. Now I've took these apart. This is the driver in the unit. It's rated at 4 ohms. got a few washers stuck in the back of the magnet. But it's rated at 4 ohms. Don't really know a lot about that driver. It's a paper driver. It's got a rubber uh, outside there. 
So um, yeah, it, it seems okay. It's, it's got a reasonable amount of weight. Don't forget these are only rated here at 20 watts, 35 peak. So there's not going to be a massive magnet, but uh, yeah, it seems to do the job okay. A reasonably sized magnet on that. So that's the uh, driver. But I didn't actually measure that. Well, what is that? It's probably about an 8-inch driver, is it? Something like it looks about an 8-inch, doesn't it? Something like that. I didn't actually measure that. And the tweeter here, tweeter, um, is this here. And I'll take it, this is about 2-inch, uh, 2.5-inch, maybe 3-inch tweeter. Probably more like, yeah, maybe 3-inch tweeter. Something like that. Uh, paper cone tweeter there. Uh, it is marked up. Um, SL1140 I think that is 4 ohm as well so that's the tweet these speakers are rated at 4 ohms as well just to say that uh, so make sure amplifier supports 4 ohms not all amplifiers go down low as 4 a lot of them are 8 minimum so be careful you don't put a, an amplifier that's uh, rated at 8 ohms minimum on these speakers at only 4 so that's it they're fairly well built really for what they are they're not so bad like I say the grills don't come on off they've got their little jewel bags that Kind of spins around so you could have these horizontal or vertical i suppose anyway how did they actually sound just before i do the sound actually just want to bring these wolf dells in these wolf dell 30s delta 30s and these if we compare them they're not a massive difference in size these are probably three quarters of an inch higher uh they're probably about the same width and depth wise they're probably half an inch deeper so these are just a tad smaller than the wolf dell Delta 30s and Delta 30 points, so that kind of thing. So I just thought I'd mention that because I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a comparison between them and the Wolfdale Diamond Freeze as I do this review. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, normal kind of stuff, different amplifiers, different kind of music genres and everything else, uh, with all my new body and all my new padding in now. So if we go to the bass here first, we start on the bass. The bass is fairly tight. It's got quite a fairly tight bass quite a nice sounding bass it doesn't sound too bad at all for what they are you know i mean it's not too bad sounding the bass um it goes when it goes around the kit and that kind of stuff and the uh, uh bass guitar and that you, you know it's not too bad you know you can pick out the different notes and that it's not too bad uh overall you know fairly satisfying gives a reasonable amount of bass for the size pretty much the same even though these are ported uh these ain't there's not a great deal between the bass they probably give out about the same bass each it's, it's not a great deal these take a little bit more driving by the way than those uh delta 30s they do take a little bit drop more driving I'm, I'm guessing these are about 86 db something like that sensitivity uh compared with the uh, wolfdale um deltas there yeah, so the bass ain't too bad, that's quite alright. The mids ain't too bad, neither. The vocals and that ain't too bad. Trumpet, sax and that. It's not bad, it ain't fantastic, but it ain't bad, you know what I mean? But um, the thing that spoils this speaker here, because it did sound quite nice, you know, in, in most respects, it wasn't quite as airy uh, as the uh, Deltas, and it definitely weren't as airy as the Diamond Freeze, but um, it did kind of add that signature, the Diamond Freeze, to a certain extent, like I say, it wasn't as airy, well as open as them diamond freeze but it had quite a nice sound to it but what spoiled it was the top end the tweeter it had quite a reasonable amount of detail in that in, in the top end it weren't bad it weren't fantastic but it had a reasonable amount of detail in the top end it's just it had a lot of sibilance in it you know when i say sibilance it was it's like, like it was kind of just had that it's hard to explain really but um it just sounded spiky and not very pleasant like you with me but if you see past that, it had a reasonable amount of detail, but it just spoiled the party. That's what spoiled it, was this tweeter here, I think, that's spoiling it. Uh, so, I thought what I'd do, uh, just to give it a chance, is that uh, I had a few spare capacitors here, as you can see, I do carry a few spares. Uh, and I changed the capacitors, that there was just a little bit off. Uh, I think the, the main one was a 30 microfarad capacitor. I think, what did I use for that, 33 or 38, something like that. It's a little bit out, not too far, and I was pretty much spot on with a smaller capacitor which is going to control the treble more anyway that 4.7 that I used and, and inside here was a 5 microfarad capacitor so I weren't a million miles out with that I was pretty spot on with that really so I put it all back together both speakers and everything after putting them in there and give it another go now what that did do it made them it gave a little bit more detail but it didn't cure the kind of like that that spikiness that harshness um, and that kind of sibilance that you was getting with um, with females and with some instruments, you know what I mean? Like say the, the sax and that didn't sound too bad, it was okay, but that kind of just crept into it and did and did spoil it a bit. Uh, more noticeable with um, with the more top end with the vocals, the female vocals, 
and some cymbals and that kind of stuff it was more noticeable but the main notice was really on the vocals I think is that sibilance that extra you know it's just just getting in the way spoiling the party and annoying really um, so um, other than that this had a good sound it was just that was spoiling it if you could take that away this would you know these, these were much better than the, the, than the uh, Deltas overall sound wise apart from that sibilance and that they had a much better sound, you know, better sounding speaker to me. They, they weren't a million miles away from uh, the uh, Wolfdale Diamond Freeze, you know what I mean? They had quite a nice, pleasant, quite a nice sound. weren't quite as open as them, uh, weren't quite as airy as them. And, and like I say, if it weren't for the siblings, if you could tame that down and get it get it better than what it was and, and maybe had a decent driver, which I didn't have another one to swap over that was that size, that kind of thing, um, they probably would have been all right, you know what I mean? They wouldn't have been a bad speaker. Just spoiled by that. But, um, Interesting, I think, because this is the bottom end of the range. They they done a reasonable job, really, apart from this spoiling the party, um, of getting a reasonable sound out of it. And I think if you know, if you went up a few few more steps, you know, more models up in the range, we'd have replaced this with a different tweeter, um, with a silk dome tweeter or something like that. Um, then. I think you know they're probably going to sound okay. They're going to be quite a good sounding speaker. So it's interesting that uh, I will look out for another dual set of speakers, a bigger set. Um, this time I'm probably ain't going to go by pictures. I'll probably ask or try and get some dimensions and find out what model number it is. Or hopefully they took the front off and shown you what what drivers uh, are in the speaker. So uh, if I do see one with um, a metal dome or silk dome tweet or something like that, rather than this paper cone tweeter. I'll definitely get a pair, I think, because, you know, it probably sound quite nice, I would have thought. You know what I mean? It's kind of got me interested. So I am looking about for another set of jewel. Obviously, it's got to be the right price. And I think I ain't going to overpay for anything. That's for certain. Uh, being a bit tight. And 4 uh, not the cheapest speakers I bought uh, recently. That's for certain. I did buy them uh, Kenwood ones for £1.99, which weren't really hi-fi speakers. But they still had that kind of sound that uh, you could stick on and enjoy. Um, now and again, that's for certain. And uh, I have bought another pair since, which I'll bring to the uh, channel, that they're, whether they're iFi speakers, but uh, these are realistic speakers. And they were bottom of the range kind of thing. Uh, but they did kind of put me in as, as part of the iFi. They, they showed you a turntable and these speakers as the bottom of the range. They kind of tandy, realistic um, radio shack, wherever shop you want to call it. They kind of done that free, free tier system, I think, if you remember, where you've got the cheapest, the budget, the next model up and the next model up. They kind of done that in their catalogs for quite a while. And these speakers, uh, when I dig them out of the garage, these cost me all of 99 pence. Uh, so they're really good. Uh, I will bring them to the channel and show you what they was expecting people maybe to listen to. Uh, bottom of the range kind of hi-fi. Uh, but there you go. Okay, until the next video, I'll say thanks. Okay, sorry about that. I think the uh, camera just completely shut down there. I think the old battery went there, so I quickly swapped it over. Uh, I think I pretty much wrapped up these speakers there. You know that. If you're going to buy a pair, four ninety nine or ten is probably the top uh, price, and you're going to get a bit annoyed with that sibilance after a while. Uh, so um, you know, maybe ones to give a miss, but uh, definitely look out for anything that uh, is more up the range, uh, more dearer, and uh, a different driver. Maybe worth looking at. That's for certain. Okay, until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.